Hi everyone, and this is day one of creating our game level. Uh, if you haven't done so, please make sure you have gone to File, Set Project to choose the project that you're going to be using. Here we're going to be using game level one. We're going to click Choose, and we're going to make sure that we open the scene. And our scene here is going to be game level one, day one. If you have not created one, you can start from there. As you can tell, we're starting fresh. Okay. First thing we're going to want to do when we're working with architectural modeling is we're going to want to make sure that our preferences are set to feet. So we're going to go to Window, Settings and Preferences, Preferences. And in our settings, we're going to change our linear setting to foot and click Save. Okay. From there, you can see our steps are much larger. Before, we were working in centimeters. So we can see we have much better scale to work with here. We can also scroll out to make sure that our camera is set how we want it to be, which is to accept everything. Um, we'll go over that later if we need to. All right, so first thing to start with our building, we're gonna start with the hallway. So we're gonna go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Plane, and Options. We're gonna make sure that our divisions are set to one, because we only want one plane. And we're gonna we're gonna leave this set at one all the way across and click create. Now that'll create a polygon right in the middle of our plane. So we can click that and we can go to five. So we can scroll in and we can actually see our single polygon plane. Next thing we're gonna want to do is go into the channel box editor, which is on the side. If you need to, you can click here to bring it up. Okay, and we're gonna change the scaling to match our feet. So our X is gonna equal eight feet. Our Y doesn't matter because it's a plane that doesn't have any depth. And our length is gonna equal 100. Okay, now if we hit F again, we can, oops, sorry. If we hit F here, we can focus in and see that we've created a plane that covers the entire length, all right? So now that we've set that up, we need to rename it. So over on our side here, we have our different views. I want you to click on the one that says Perspective Outliner, which is here. You can see that comes up. Select that and you'll see our plane here called P-Plane 1. Rename that to Level 1 Hallway Floor. All right. And we have our floor complete. The next thing we're going to do is add a wall. To do that, we're going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube. Now we can check the options here to make sure that we have a one by one. Make sure it's all ones all the way across. Click Create. Now we can focus in on this if we wanted to, but we really don't need to because we're going to be changing our view here. We need to change our view to orthographic inside. Now what's going to happen is you're gonna to need to press F so you can get a focus here. And you can actually see we have our wireframe cube, but we're gonna to need to move its pivot point. We want the pivot point to be at the bottom so it contacts the floor. So if we press our move tool, we can see right now our manipulator tool is in the middle. So to move this, we need to first press the D key and you can see that changes the shape we have. And then after that, we need to press the V key. Now that sets it to the vertex. After that, we then click the green arrow, making sure that it turns yellow. It doesn't turn yellow, you haven't clicked on it correctly. And drag that to the bottom at the center, just like that. And you can see, you should have it still perfectly lined up there. If we go back to shaded mode, you can see that we are perfectly at the bottom. Now, if you press X and grab the green arrow, It'll snap it directly to the plane. Now you can move back out to perspective view and scroll out a little bit. Press X again, move our red arrow and move it over to the side. This is going to be our first wall. So to make this equal our wall, we're going to need to translate and change some numbers. We're going to change our X to 0.5. So 0.5 is gonna equal six inches, which is about to, gonna be the depth of our wall. 
we're going to change y to 10, which is going to be 10 feet tall. And z is going to match what we have with the floor, which is 100. And if we click away and click back, focus in, we say we see that we have our wall created. Now we can rename this wall. We want to keep these consistent so that we know where they are at all costs. We call this level one hallway. Uh, we'll go with east wall. All right, so you have that there. Now to create our other wall, we're going to keep this selected and press Command D. That will duplicate our wall right in place, right where it is. You can see we have it here in our outliner, but you can't see it here yet because it is in the exact same position as the previous wall. So if we click X and click our arrow, we can adjust where that is. The X is locking us into our grid, so we know that it is at the exact same spot as the other wall. Now we have both of those set there. You can scroll around and see what you need to do. Okay, and we can rename this to hallway west wall. All right, our next step is going to be to insert doors. So to insert our doors, we're going to use a Boolean operation. A Boolean operation is where we take two shapes, combine them together to create one shape, uh, either adding, subtracting, or altering the shape in some way. So again, we're going to need to create polygon primitives, cube, and that's going to set a cube right in the middle. We're going to want to set the size for that to be approximately that of the door. So we're going to leave our X at 1 for 1 foot. We're going to change Y to 6.75, so almost 7 feet, okay, and our Z to 3 feet. Now that we have our door, we have to do the same process that we did with the cubes for the walls that we need to set the pivot point a little lower. So we're going to go to Panels, Orthographic, Side. We can go to Wireframe if we want to to see it a little better. We scroll out. Again, we press the D key, the V key, select the green arrow, and snap it to the bottom. Now with that set up, we can press X again, click the green, and snap it into place above. Go back to our perspective view. Move this off to the side. Now what I like to do for this is I'd actually like to take this from the top view so I can see where my doors are positioned along the wall. I want six doors on one side and three on the other. What we're going to have is three main rooms and then storage closets and bathrooms. And then on the other side, we're going to have a hallway, a patio, and a gymnasium. So I want you to set up the doors to be fairly regular on one side and a little skewed on the other side. So we'll go to panels, orthographic, top, and you can see that we are zoomed way in close. So we can actually take this wall and shift it in just by again clicking X to lock to the grid and it'll lock in on top of our wall. Now if we zoom in here a little bit better, you can actually see that it is larger than the wall itself. And that's what we want. We want the wall to be smaller than the door so that this way the Boolean operation will create a complete hole in the door. Now if you want, you can actually switch back to the perspective view and drag this down, again pressing X, snap it, keep it snapped in position using the blue because the blue will make sure that it is lined up just where it was. And we can go back to five and you see we can't really see it, but we know it is there. So to create the Boolean function, what we're going to need to do is select the door or select the wall, select the door by pressing shift and selecting it. We go to our polygons, mesh, Booleans, and difference. And that process there creates a new polygon surface on the side. We no longer need this. We have it there if we wanted to. We no longer need that, but we can actually just keep the polygon surface. So to clean this up, we would go to edit, delete all by type, history, 
and you can see how we have deleted the two objects that are no longer necessary. Now we could go ahead and rename this right now to level one hallway west wall, but we're gonna have to do this six more times, so it's really not worth the effort at the moment. So you're gonna need to do this all six times on the one, and then six times on the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those using the exact same process we did before, and I will see you right after the break. All right, so as you can see, what I've done here is I have six doors on one side and I have three on the other. Um, something that's important to note, though, is before you get into this is to make sure that you have your doors in approximate locations where you want them to be. You can't undo these Booleans once you have them done because of the next step we're going to do. We're going to erase the history. So once you're done, you can actually see you should have a mess like this. You'll have your cubes on one side and your surfaces on the other. Well, the only ones we really need to keep are these polysurface 6 in this case, and polysurface 9. Yours might have a different number, and that's fine as well. But what we're going to do to clean this up, to reduce just to what we need, we're going to go to Edit, Delete All by Type, and History. Now, what that's going to do is get rid of everything else that was created and only leave us what is left, that being our hallway west, and our hallway east. So now we can go ahead and name these one hallway west and level one hallway east. And our geometry is as simple as we can get it. We have our faces, we have our booleans, and we have our hallway. All right, that's going to wrap up this portion. Uh, we're, in day two, we're going to add in a room, some windows, and connect some doors.